I'm sure if you've been following the politics of Ghana, Chachiti Kata has been or uh, was actually one of the lead counsel or lawyers for the 2012-2013 election petition. So if you can hear us, good evening to you. Yes. Welcome to Agenda. I, I, I can hear you. And sorry, I was, I was uh, on mute, but uh, I was recognizing that uh, it's a pleasure to be on Agenda. Thank you so much, sir. We'll also be joined by Franklin Kujo, his founding president, Imani Africa, as well as uh, Vincent Echo. He is uh, the Sapua. deputy, Safwa. he is deputy local government minister uh, representing Tafo Pankrono in the Ashanti region. He'll be joining us as well. But I want to start this conversation rolling, and we want to look at Sao, the, the, the constituency, well, it's under the constituency of Guan, which has been given that golden opportunity to uh, get a representative for parliament, uh, in parliament going into this year's general election. And I want to start with you, council. I mean, we've seen or we saw what happened prior to the 2020 general election. They were disenfranchised. A, a number of you, including yourself, even in that petition to the high court, felt that it was unjust. Uh, it wasn't justified, really, how it was done. But now the Electoral Commission is making it possible, as it were, for uh, this, these four communities to vote under the Guan constituency. It must be very good news for you. You must be happy. Well, we hope so. Before the 2020 elections, various delegations from these communities actually met with the Electoral Commission about the vote and got all kinds of assurances that they would be able to vote in the parliamentary as well as in the presidential elections. Suddenly, on the eve of the elections, 6 December to be precise, in the evening, they had announcements on radio and in the media which said that they could only vote in the presidential election, but not in the parliamentary election. And that is why, indeed, for the last four years. And this is, I mean, it's a very serious situation. We shouldn't just gloss over it, that a group of people, communities in Ghana, have been unrepresented in parliament over the last almost four years as we're coming into that. So I think that we, you know, we have to get into why such a thing could happen. What has been the role of the Electoral Commission, which has a certain mandate under the Constitution to make sure that democracy is protected? What has been their role in undermining democracy? What has been their role? Uh, from where you said, what do you think has been the issue? Because I remember that uh, somewhere in, in February, I believe this year, we had the Electoral Commission boss or a statement from the EC indicating that, well, at the time they wanted to uh, ensure that Sal was able to participate in the 2020 general election, Parliament in November had gone on recess and therefore it couldn't really do much. That's a nonsense because... Everybody knows that Parliament has a certain timetable and if you're taking steps to ensure that these people have their right to vote protected, I think you do it according to the timetable of Parliament. But you know what? I, I think that what is striking over the years, in my mind, is the inconsistent positions that the EC has been taking on the matter. Because 6th of December, you announce that they cannot vote, and you give reasons, like you're mentioning, that um, Parliament is about to rise and so on. But if you knew that you were going to have to create a constituency for them because it had been determined that they should not um, be part of our whole constituency anymore. There are legal steps that you should take. But when you look at the legal steps that they took, I mean, those legal steps did not live up to the requirements of the law. For instance, 
they passed a, cons uh, a constitutional instrument 119, which was called the District Electoral Areas and Designation of Units Regulations, in which they sought to move, you know, these people into Jasikan districts. But the Electoral Commission doesn't have power to create or to change districts. So, I mean, they have some, you know, a role in re making recommendations for districts to be created, but they can't create districts. So that constitutional instrument does not meet, you know, a simple test of legality. Then later, around July 2020, they passed another constitutional instrument, one to a representation of the people, parliamentary constituencies instrument, in which they claimed that they were moving those electoral areas into another constituency, Boehm constituency. Now, it's very interesting. Earlier this year, in around May, I think during an exchange of, um, you know, positions, I mean, a, a very rigorous debate with Franklin Cujo, we had the Electoral Commission on the 16th of May come up to say that the reason that they could not allow the um, Sao people to vote in the Boeing constituency was because they could not be part of the Jasikan district because if they joined the Jasikan district, it would mean that the representative for Boeing would actually be covering two different districts, some, some a Guan district and a Jasikan district. Now, this was 16th of May this year that they were making Giving that, giving that explanation, they said it was non-compliant with the local uh, government um, act, the local governance act. Now, I mean, did they suddenly realize this in May this year? And clearly, from the beginning, December 2020, if they really believed that these people had become part of the BOEM constituency. I guess then they should have asked them to vote in one constituency. Do I hear but, you... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Do I hear you say that the EC intentionally did that? Because if I read a statement from the Electoral Commission, the one I was referring to earlier, uh, it, it, it's, it gave explanations as to why it felt that anybody who uh, is claiming that the Electoral Commission intentionally disenfranchised people is just being disingenuous. Well, I mean, obviously, they did it deliberately in the sense that they issued an announcement saying that people cannot vote. That's a deliberate act. I mean, when you say intentional or whatever, I, I, I don't know what other meaning you can uh, attribute. They, they intentionally put out a statement on the eve of the election saying to some people, you cannot vote in parliamentary elections. That happened. That actually happened. Mm. And, oh. and the point that I want to end with is that even that constitutional instrument 128 does not meet basic tests of constitutionality because the Electoral Commission is governed by provisions of the Constitution. If you look at what Article 47.5 of the Constitution sets out, there are ways in which you can alter constituencies or their boundaries. Now, the people in Sao have been part of Hohoe constituency since 2016. And under Article 47.5, you can change those constituencies in not less than seven years or on the basis of a census. There are clear provisions as to how you can change the constituency. 
Nothing like that had, uh, it wasn't seven years, in 2020, 2016 wasn't seven years ago. And the other preconditions for changing the boundaries had not happened. So, I mean, even at that time, it did not make sense. So, why was there such a determination so deliberately to create seeming legal frameworks which were inconsistent with the laws of the land and then suddenly in in may this year we have an acknowledgement by themselves that they also thought that they couldn't do it because it was in con contravention mm. of some which were inconsistent with the laws of ghana that's what you say i want to come to my panel right now uh, but i want to ask you this last question before I come to my panel to get their preliminary thoughts on this and we'll go to the other issue. Uh, do you, uh, I, I heard you made two points. You said that we cannot gloss over this. Yes, EC uh, is giving the people the opportunity to vote this year. So seemingly it looks like the issue has been solved, but you're still saying that we cannot gloss over this. And then you also make an allegation of inconsistency of the Electoral Commission. Why are you saying this? Are you worried that perhaps uh, we could see a repeat of what happened in 2020, briefly? Well, I hope not, but you can never tell because, like I said, the track record has not been one of consistency. I'm coming to you, uh, Samuel Kujeta Blakwa. Not according to me, according to the facts, for goodness sake. I mean, we, we, ju we just have to look at the facts. In 2020, 6 December, they were not allowed to vote even though supposedly constitutional instruments have been created. Mm.